But I do think that women don't submit wisely enough. Ooh. So that is where the problems yep. lie when we have we have a choice, obviously, yeah. when we submit, making sure that, you know, God's wisdom, understanding, thought process, everything is intertwined into that decision that you're making. You're putting your whole life plan into this man you yeah. just met on Tinder? No. <laughs> You just met on the street at the party at homecoming. Stop it. <laughs> it's not. It's... The Bible says in Ephesians, what, 22, 22 to 33 or 23. Um, there's a portion in there that is talking to the men mm -hmm. saying that love your wife as, you know, Christ loved the church. Absolutely. So. I feel like this is something that a lot of men skip over. <laughs> oh, men look, have partial. It's yeah, like they like have they small don't eyes. I'm like, you don't like, remember that part, huh? They go to the first part. <laughs> Wives submit to your husband right. as the Lord, and that's it. The scripture yeah, ends. Yeah. But I'm like, no, you got to keep reading. Re keep reading. Keep, keep reading. reading down, <laughs> and then you'll see your part. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode. My name is Chi, and this is V, and welcome to the Real Herb. Hey V. Hello. How are you? Todd. Todd, truth <laughs> is on Todd. I'm crying. <laughs> but facts. It's you been know, a long it's been It's been a day, it's, it's been a week, it's, it's been all of that. I've been a season. But we're here, live and direct, and we're super excited. But before we get started, what are you grateful for? Today, I am grateful for God getting me to 7 p.m. Right? That's it. I mean, that's really the older we gave me, the little, like, wow. little things. Facts. I think I'm grateful for the same things because I'm like, we made it. It yeah. feels like an accomplishment. We've been working all day. We've been working all day. Yeah. And, but God has been sustaining us. Amen. So as we talk about gratitude, we always talk about expectation. Mm -hmm. What are you expecting God to do? Whether in this, your life or in this episode or yeah. community, whatever. Um, yeah, definitely within this episode, I think that our conversation is important and um, it's just something that needs to be discussed. Yeah. So I'm expecting God to just shine through this episode, shine through the show, shine through the app, everything. Period. I'm expecting in this season, actually... For God to move my heart. I've been feeling like. To where? To <laughs> softness. Oh, I'm crying. I need God to soften my heart small, small. Because as we were doing prepping for this episode. And I've just been having conversations in life. I'm like. Am I getting a little like hard? Like, hardened. Hardened. You know what I mean? Just from. That's life though. That's life. Life will make you hard. But I want to be who God calls me to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm like just expecting him for him to do some some hard work on me okay because i'm feeling some type of way i'm crying but not no, <laughs> nothing deep nothing nothing too deep but god knows what i'm talking about mm -hmm. mm. i do too you do too <laughs> <laughs> and so does veronica okay <laughs> so today we are talking about submission submission i'm sure you either stood up a little in your chair like oh submission <laughs> Or you rolled your eyes like, ooh, submission. Right. But we about to get into it. The good, the bad. The ugly. The ugly. Hopefully not ugly. Uh, hopefully though. not the ugly. <laughs> hopefully there's some sort of revelation we get at the end mm, of this. Amen. And yeah, this is just not for the ladies. I mean, of course, the real her is for the ladies. But yeah. ladies, you know, if you got a man, a friend, send him the episode. He, he needs to hear this too. Yes. Because... We women, we have our own standpoint. We're trying to, what is the word? Champion ourselves yeah. and have our voice. And it seems sometimes it gets lost. It gets lost. Or the fellows are trying to dim us down. Yeah. And that's not today. <laughs> that's okay. not today. So <laughs> let's get into it. Right. So we start off with just defining what submission is, of course. Um, she looked up a definition. And on I love the dictionary. Google. The Googles. And so I'm going to read that definition and then we're going to kind of go into what our personal definition is, what our personal outlook on submission is and all that. So Webster's dictionary <laughs> defines mm. submission as 
the action or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force mm. or <laughs> to the will or authority of another person. <laughs> Yeah, you know, every time I read this superior force, it just, who is it makes me cringe. Who is the force? <laughs> Which one of these small boys have force these Je- days? Jesus. Jesus is the only force. <laughs> that's it. And yield such strong words used here, yielding. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's just what submission means. I think you have to put yourself in a place where you're going to give and accept the fact that you're giving um, some sort of power to the side. So that you can humbly take the whatever, whoever you're submitting towards, like humbly take their thoughts, their quote unquote authority, whatever they're trying to guide you to towards. <sighs> Something about giving my power away. It's difficult. It it's just difficult. hurt my chest. Cause I'm, I'm sorry, just like, I saw that. I saw that. I was like, oh, <laughs> power. I'm like, why can't I keep my power and still submit? I think you can, though. You think you can? I think you can. I think submitting is a form of power, too. I think I know a lot of women, Mm, a lot of women who were, quote unquote, in the back, Michelle Obama. I'm sure that she had a lot of. She was submitting to be first lady, though. Okay, that's fine. (laughs) You know, these people be wanting you to submit. Look. To (laughs) be eating. Yo, I ramen noodle. To, I knew you I was about to, to say that. I knew it. Like she about to bring up noodles. I was about to bring up something petty. I was like, these people be submitting to have you in the deep struggling oh, to submit no. to be first lady. Okay, so it's not a. She had a bet, but what was she submitting towards before she was first lady? To even get to that point, I think. Do you want to talk about Michelle Obama's journey? No, nah, because I'm not. I'm not privy to it all the way. Let's just say that she was the breadwinner. Yeah, okay, I remember that. She was the breadwinner. Barack actually wasn't doing well. He was like an intern okay. or something like that at the law firm. And she, I mean, again, like there is some submission. Or not even submission. She had a vision. Or she believed in his vision. Yeah, but and she left her. But that belief in his vision had to come with some sort of submission. I even though he was in a a lower level than she was. Yeah. She still, if she wasn't practicing some type of humility, some sort mm-hmm. of submission towards Brock, they wouldn't even be in the place that they're in right now. She wouldn't be with him. True. She would be like, oh, I'm too good for this. True. Look, we we'll get into <sighs> we it. We're going to get into <laughs> it. Okay. But personally, what is your, or what is your outlook? What's your personal outlook on what submission is? I... <laughs> Submission is like a construct to me. Okay. It's a concept. Okay. I think it's a cool concept, some yeah. parts of it. But my, I don't have a problem with submission. Mm-hmm. I will say that. I don't okay. have a problem. But I think it takes two to submit. Of and I have an issue with the way when I hear men talk about submission. Mm-hmm. And like even men i am like been interested in. Where it's just like. Oh, you think submission is service to you. And I'm just like, you think I did all this stuff? (laughs) I went to school twice. To be your servant? To be your servant. (laughs) To stay at home just to give birth to your kids. Mm. That, to me, is... I'm not a nanny. Right. That's not my calling. But, so I'm like, there's parts of it where I'm like, I get it, like, to... It's like, what are the words for this? Like... It's just, okay, for me, I'm like, if I am married, right now I'm not married, right. so let's preface this, V and I are not married, yes. women. So in the space where I am married, I see that I have traditional values where it's just like, I am like, okay, I don't have a problem with my man being head of household, mm-hmm. right, in which he makes decisions and all this stuff. But remember, as a woman, you're not making decisions without me, you're not just going to Right, wake up and be course. like this is what we're gonna do now it's very much so like we're a team so i'm like i see that team aspect play into submission where it's like let's figure this out together i'm submitting to you because i trust your vision i trust where you're leading this family mm-hmm. but i'm not submitting blindly to anybody to know yeah yeah man it's mm-hmm. not happening never that so never that what about you what's your definition of submission 
Um, similar to yours, I I would never find myself submitting to someone who does not have a vision or somebody that I can't trust. Mm, trust somebody that I cannot trust. Somebody that I don't I don't have any faith in. Of course, like. I have to see their values. I have to know, okay, this is a man of God. This is somebody who at least tries their best to do things by the word and have some, you know, holy wisdom attached to the decision that they're making before I'm like, okay, I'm going to submit to this person. But I don't know. I think that submission is not a bad thing either. I think that it has a very negative outlook on it absolutely but i do think that women don't submit wisely enough so that is where the problems lie when we have we have a choice obviously when we submit when i I just this is how i think of it i have a choice to submit to you right so you're Mm. not going to decide to do anything without putting some thought into it without making sure that you know god's wisdom understanding thought process everything is intertwined into that decision that you're making Mm. so if you're deciding to submit to somebody whether it's friends your significant other in this case parent whatever it is there has to be some wisdom that comes from that yeah and i think that if you are submitting with wisdom to a significant other, then it's only going to breed goodness and blessings and and things like that. But if you're submitting blindly, you're not really going to God and be like, wait a minute, should I actually submit to this person? Or am I just submitting because this is what people are telling me to do as a woman? That's when things get messy. Crazy. So (laughs) I went to lunch today with a friend and we touched a little bit upon this. Mm -hmm. And I think you literally said the choice. Yeah. And I think people lose their choice even before submission even comes in. Right. So just we we were talking about in the aspect of like women and age and like dating and how we get pressured into taking the man getting dating the man who wants us and not the man we want. Right. So you're already on the losing end like you're already down because you're like i'm choosing a man who wants me i don't necessarily want him but i don't have no one else i don't have no to, one so. else right i'm nervous about my age the mm-hmm. concept of the ticking time all that stuff so you're feeling all these external pressures so you're already in a situation you don't want to be mm-hmm. and then if we're listening to like stereotypical gender norms then they're like submit so you're already not with the right person for other people are telling you what to do and now you're submitting to one dodo head <laughs> and the they're submitting or just women so i'm not gonna say they but like women we sometimes submit to men like, like just what you said because we don't feel as though we don't have any other options yeah. we're getting older we're trying to be you know we're trying to have babies uh. before our eggs just turn infertile like we're trying to figure it out we're trying In to do vitro. what we can do before it's too late so right. we're like oh this man wants me all right bet i'm just gonna oh. i'm gonna do what i gotta do and that's and that is why i think men have this misplaced confidence mm-hmm. where they feel like they tend to and i think this is part of the submission where they're like i'm the prize right a lot of men are entering these new generation boys they're entering relationships like i'm the prize right so <laughs> she should be happy to submit to me exactly she should be happy that i'm leading going to and when you don't, their pride takes over and they're just like, what do you mean you're not going to listen? What do you mean you're trying to tell me what to do? Like, what do you? Yeah, I am actually because you're not making any sense. You're not. <laughs> and that's the issue where it's like there has to be. I think the reason why submission gets a bad rap is because one, there's too much ego yeah. involved. Like mm-hmm. if a man or a woman goes into it like I'm the prize of the relationship, then you're going to automatically feel like, like everything belongs to you exactly and i'm like there is a balance where it's like exactly you're at sir i'm at service to you yeah. and you also are at service to me yeah and I, that's i know a lot of men are not used to um hearing too many no's when it comes to women especially in this day and age they're not used to it so mm. the submission it's it's like something that they just expect to happen and yeah. women are just doing it blindly yeah Without girls are submitting anything. to their boyfriends. 
Think about girls been your, look at your face. <laughs> Every girl, a lot of women I know, they get into, and that's again that's submitting the to the wrong person. Where it's or just it's like, doing it too fast, too fast. Yeah, you meet a guy, you like him, submit everything. Every, your you have whole an, entire being submit. No, you're putting your whole life plan to this man you yeah. just met on Tinder. No, <laughs> you just met on the street at the party at homecoming. Stop it. <laughs> it's not. It's. Like I'm in your I'm in your house right. I'm in your business Cause right. it's like You haven't qualified him mm-hmm. You don't know his foundation I'm all about dating through seasons exactly. Right So it's exactly. like If I meet you in the summer I'm not taking the relationship seriously For <laughs> We have to go to the fall Like right. let's fall, winter, See how the spring. fall The winter Let's see how you yeah. change Because I need to see you When you're up When you're down mm-hmm. When you're going through something That way I can really know Who I'm dealing with But mm-hmm. it's like You meet him And you're like this is my last bus stop. <laughs> and then and I'm then, not th- trying to throw shade, but it don't work because right. they're not the right person. Right. And then you're at five other bus stops. Girl. So there's a lot, obviously, that we could say there's about submission. Um, but I know that we want to do get into some biblical references. Of course. Um, we are getting into Ephesians mainly. So this is all from Ephesians chapter five. Yeah. So everyone out there you guys can read Ephesians chapter 5 and kind of get more of a biblical reference of what submission is what giving yourself to another authority or another person of authority really looks like from a biblical sense but Ephesians chapter 5 touches on some things that are important yeah so uh, verse 21 says to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ Mm. what do you think that means I think that if we think about why people came together, why what God's vision for marriage is very much so like to honor the church. Right. So if we're submitting to people, then it's just like we're doing it out of honor to Christ mm-hmm. because we could be out here not submitting to one one another. We could be polygamous and we or whatever the case may be and or just choosing not. But when we come together, we're doing it in that's why we get married for those who get married in church, you're getting married in church in front of God Mm -hmm. in reverence to him. So it's like, that means you're taking on or accepting that you're going to take on the ideals for your, for your, from the church, from what the, your vows say and all those things. Yeah. I really think that, um, just reading out of reverence for Christ, it makes me think about you submitting, keeping the things of God in mind Mm -hmm. always. So you submit, yeah. <laughs> so th- yeah, you submitting, keeping the things of God on your mind at all times. Yeah. So people, like I said before, and like you said before too, when women or just people in general are submitting to another person, an authority figure or whatever it is blindly or without asking God for the wisdom and the knowledge they need to actually submit Mm -hmm. and stay submitted and be Mm. blessed through that submission. They lose it because they're like, okay, they forget the whole reason as to why they're submitting in the first place. God wants us to submit to our friends. He wants us to submit to our parents. He wants us to submit to authority. Right. You know, and then also significant others. All of us have a whole point or, a part in submission. Absolutely. It's not just women who do. Everybody has a part in right. submission to all these people. And that's because God wants us to, in my opinion, God is saying that because he wants everyone to have some sort of humility attached Absolutely. to the things that they're doing on a daily basis. Absolutely. I mean, and I think you made a great point when you said we submit to our friends. And another thing we do is we submit to our calling. Right. Oh, exactly. So yeah. it's like, a big part of like what we do is like we've submitted ourselves to our ministry. Mm -hmm. So that means like we're at, we literally serve our community. We serve the women that come on our calls, whether we are in the mood to or not, whether we are (laughs) well slept, well eaten, whatever it is, because it's like, we're like, I'm doing this of service. And in return, God pours it back into us overflow all the time. But there is that like give and take where it's just like, this I'm feeding, but I'm also being fed. Exactly. And that um, you doing it out of service. It's like, I'm not necessarily doing these things out of service to the people. I'm doing these things out of service to the God 
as a service to God. And as I'm serving God, these people are getting service exactly. as well. But it's the head point that's like, okay, God, I'm doing this for you. For you. And because I'm doing it for you, there's people being blessed because of right. that. And you said staying committed. Yeah. Because I think in relationships, that's the key part where mm-hmm. you're talking about if we're doing, I'm not, I've been, when I'm married, I'm sure that my husband and I are not going to be jolly jolly every day. Oh, no. You're going to annoy me. Gonna I'm going to annoy you for sure. Right. <laughs> but if I keep in mind, I'm submitting to God mm-hmm. and through my submission through God, I'm submitting to you. Right. Therefore, it's not about my mood. You've yeah. upset me. Doesn't mean I'm about to come burn this house and to bass it down. Like I'm about to <laughs> still do right by you, even though I'm not in the mood. Exactly. Um, because I think we're very mood based people. So when yeah, we're not in the mood, of we just start flipping out, flipping out. <laughs> but also, the Bible says in Ephesians what twenty two twenty two to thirty three or twenty three. Um, there's a portion in there that is talking to the men, mm-hmm. saying that. Love your wife as, you know, Christ loved the church. Absolutely. So I feel like this is something that a lot of men skip over. <laughs> oh, men lo- have partial. It's yeah, like they like have they small don't remember, eyes. Like, where you don't like, remember that part, huh? They go to the first part. <laughs> Wives, submit to your husbands right. as the Lord. And that's it. The scripture Hear ends. You. But I'm like, no, you got to keep reading. Re- keep reading. Keep, keep reading. reading down. <laughs> and then you'll see your part. Right. Exactly. And just thinking, I know we were talking about this earlier, but like just thinking about what it really or how the love of god to the church even looked right that was heavy heavy to the point where he died for our whole entire sins even though we didn't deserve it (laughs) we didn't deserve it like and even before jesus's crucifixion the love that he had for us meant that he was recruiting thieves and murderers and you know all types of sinners to be on his team so that he can show them the love of God Absolutely. and that they can be redeemed. They can find that mercy yeah. and that grace that God has for us Absolutely. and be able to go out and preach the gospel while Jesus is there and after he left. Absolutely. So that was the, the head or that was the leadership that, that Jesus brought to the church. That's the leadership that he brought to his disciples, the people during that time. And that's the leadership that he's bringing to us. And to, for the Bible to say that the man of the house needs to harbor that type of love the heart of, mm-hmm. is deep. And I, I know that a lot of men are not doing that, of course. Yeah. And that's why I said, we said before, submitting with wisdom and a part of submitting with wisdom is for women to know, okay, is my man doing those qualities Absolutely. that we just named? Right. If not, I don't. There's no, there's, there's no submission. There's there. no submission. If you, if I, if I can't trust that my man is hearing from God, yeah, then why would I listen to you? Mm. You're like a madman. Like you're just, you're just. That means you're just listening to yourself, or listening to the world, or listening to what your fellow homeboy is saying, right? Which is air, fellow homeboy, <laughs> which is nothing. <laughs> so yeah. definitely, and I think when we think of, if we literally break down how. Christ loved the church, we would see that it was never convenient. Never. Like, and it's never something that you, it, it's always like he went out of his way. Mm-hmm. Even think of when I think of like the story of when he like broke the bread and fed all those people with the fish. It's like he went out of his way because he was like, I need to provide. Right. Because people don't like to talk about provision. <laughs> and I'm not about to break this down. This is not going to be a, yo, uh, yo man <laughs> needs to provide for you. Talk oh, that. So not, that could be for another day. But <laughs> God was, Christ was providing for his people. Exactly. As his people were following him through the wilderness, through whatever he called, he was they, making sure they, they get, was protected. Exactly. They had a place to stay. They had Some food, food to eat. Everything. Ladies, this is not me telling you that the place to stay is a mansion, <laughs> but there was a place to stay. <laughs> there was food to eat. There was food to eat and a place to stay. So make sure you fed yeah, and right. house. But towards the end of the Ephesians, after it goes off of, you know, saying what how the man should be acting, then it goes on to say, okay, now wives, after you see that going on, then you can submit to your man. Absolutely. Because that, yeah, the last one says, uh, now as a church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husband and everything. But that comes after God is saying, okay, but the husband needs to love his wife as Christ loved the church. 
first. Yeah. Can you repeat that for people? <laughs> I just want, I just. For the people in the back. For the people in the back. Because it's, I, it's crazy that this mm-hmm. keeps getting skipped by. Yeah, it does. It is crazy. It's actually baffling. And if men <laughs> took that, like, I'm good, that. And that's like what I think is the right authority, right? Because mm-hmm. I'm not a person who has a problem with authority. But I'm like, what kind of, the attitude of the authority. If I'm like, if it's like you are owning this role and it's just mm-hmm. like, I see you. You're like. I'm going to do whatever it is I need to do for Christ. And I'm going to honor you as my wife. I'm going to honor you, my family and all that stuff. I think we would see less issues. Like yeah. I, th- I think we would see less broken homes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that um, as women are just submitting with more wisdom and they see that their husband is, or just whoever they're with is harboring the qualities that, God wants a Mm -hmm. husband or a man of God to harbor within a household. I know a lot of women think that submission means that they're losing something. Mm. If you are submitting wisely to a man who's actually following the call of God, you're not going to lose anything. You're actually going to gain more from your submission, gain more from your humility. And the husband is going to gain more from being that bearer of provision, being that bearer of peace, being that bearer of leadership that God wants the man to be within the household. So the Bible obviously says a lot of things about submission, but you know, we got to talk about a little bit about what the world says about submission and, you know, just whether we feel or just what the stance of submission is in our society right now. Do you want me to go? You yeah, to I want you to <laughs> You want me to leave? I Just, think when we... Okay. It's okay. It's all right. Truth, I think women are at the point where they're like, it's either they're not submitting mm-hmm. at all because yeah. they're like, I can do it on my own. Mm-hmm. And like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> let's just i'm just gonna i'm not i'm not i don't uh-huh. want to step on every toe okay so i'll do you, you the episode. say what you gotta say but yeah i think <laughs> women are like i'm not gonna submit because i can do it on my own mm-hmm. and of course there's positives i love that women are at the place where they're like making decisions but there's also the offset of the group where women are like i'm only submitting to a man who like checks off all these things on my list and a lot of those things are monetary worldly exactly, things. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, I'm over here looking for a man who carries grace, a man mm-hmm. who is leading God. It's like, does he have money? Does he have a car? Does he have this? Does yeah. da, 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 Are we going on vacation? So, so it's very, yeah. it's very materialistic submission. Yeah. And that submission is really not submission. It's transaction. Cause you're like, exactly. I'm submitting so that I can also get a Birkin bag. Right. The Birkin bag girls, the Birkin bag girls. And I, you know, no shame. No shame. <laughs> no shame. Because I too, right? I would too. like some backs. <laughs> <laughs> but I do agree with you wholeheartedly on that. It's like I think maybe in our parents' generation, it was more. Uh, you see the submission kind of all over the spectrum, but all now over it's the like spectrum. you either do it or because you want something, or you're just not doing it all because you're tired and you're just like, right. I got money, I can just submit to myself at this yeah. point. Yeah, and I think with our parents' generation, even their generation pre-4, it was just a lot of abuse in the submission. Absolutely. So you'd see women who they their whole, their whole lives, their whole resume was mother, wife, and, like, all they did was for their husband and to mm-hmm. please their husband. And those husbands were, everyone knows about those neighborhood men who had all them kids, be sleeping around doing all that stuff seriously and it's like and your wife is over here being a humble woman a woman of god trying to do all this stuff but you can't even do the simple thing and not embarrass her (laughs) i'm crying but i know that like even if we go back back into you know the days where women couldn't even get simple things without being married like they had to have they had to have a husband yeah in order to get like a driver's license or just get small things that regular people can do easily now. Yeah. They couldn't do anything if they weren't married. They literally were like a barely a citizen, barely even a human being if they weren't married. So I think that type of 
I honestly would say it's trauma. That type of trauma, trauma definitely se- transcended. Because these women into, are still alive. Exactly. Exactly. This wasn't that long ago to where we're not seeing anybody who's gone through that. Um, but that definitely has transcended into the generation that we're looking at now yeah. to where it's like, I don't want to feel like I'm being dehumanized or right, I don't want to feel like I'm um, less of a person because of me either not having a husband or just, you know, feeling as though I have to give my authority or yeah. give my everything yeah, my to whole, a husband yeah. and have him do just run the household. I think it's a dehumanization. Yeah. I think that's like probably if I was to really get down to the root of it where it's just like the like I don't like want to why fe- women don't submit now. Yeah, like right. I don't want to feel like I'm less than exactly. and I don't want you to treat me like them I'm right. less than. Because that same that dehumanization that you know women could have felt or yeah. can feel right now just how that transcended generations men feeling like they have that pride or that ego of being able to say what they want do what they yeah. want and not having to reap any repercussions about it that also transcended into now too yeah because they still feel like they can't be touched i mean listen to music right look it's just tra- it's just trauma. I feel like, I mean, I you know I turn up here and there, but a lot of the music you'll just hear is just like laced in trauma. Mm-hmm. Like, why do you feel like you need to call women out of their names or yeah. talk to people like that just so that you can feel big? Right, literally. Like what? Is, and I think that go. And I mean, I'm not a man, so maybe we'll have to get some men on the episode to talk. But it's just like, <laughs> what are what is like your manhood rooted in? Right, because mm-hmm. I think of, if we think of what how we were bred or just like the upbringing of women to like we're taught to be loving and kind exactly. and like everything from your childhood, you're being groomed to be a wife almost like you, nah, might, you need to learn how to cook. Exactly. So you, you need to know how to clean so you can keep your home. Right. But it's just like, how are men being bred? What are, what's their, what's their process to becoming a husband? Like what are their parents telling them? What is society telling them? Like, Oh, do you same. need to know how to cook so that you can keep a wife? I've, I've, you know, look. doubt it. <laughs> Literally, don't say things like that. I don't say things like that Seriously. at all. So, I think our our generation's job to raise better sons mm-hmm. who are like self aware, who are gonna be like who have skills and who are like, okay, I know how to serve in my household because exactly. my mother gave me a position in my house to serve, to not serve. just my sisters right. had to clean. Like, exactly. I know how to clean, I know how to cook, all yeah. that stuff. That way, when you are requested to cook in your family house, you're not like, she uh-huh. wants me to cook. <laughs> but you'll be like, instead you'll be like, oh, I've been cooking, my mom taught yeah, me how to cook, my exactly. father taught me how to cook. I saw my father cook for my mother. Mm-hmm. So it's not like... Taboo. Taboo. It's exactly. not groundbreaking. It's just normal. Yeah. But then also I think for for couples, how they can come back to understanding that like submission isn't something that's bad on both ends. Absolutely. I think that a lot of couples aren't doing a good job in just communicating what they view submission as personally. Absolutely. And that's really important, especially if you're with someone who you think you're going to marry and have kids with it's really important to have these types of conversations like this is how i view submission how do you view submission and if it's completely different how can we compromise exactly how can we understand the differences between it and how can we make it one so that we can actually move into a marriage and a family with some sort of like peace and understanding of each other i think that's what you said is so key that expectations yeah like setting the proper expectations like let's have these discussions beforehand that way we're not f- completely thrown off yeah. because for me already i'm already like i'm a busy woman already mm-hmm. i don't have kids i'm not married and it's like i'm we run ministry we run businesses together and i'm just like the kind of person i'm with he needs to understand that he does he can't have the expectation that his Wife is going to be able to cook seven days a week or (laughs) whatever those kind of like we hear worldly (laughs) standards that people's grandmothers used to do. It's like you can't have that expectation of me, but you can have the expectation that's like I'm going to show up when I need to be there. I'm going to make sure that things Mm -hmm. are good. Like there's things I can do. But if it's like if you're doing tit for tat, like, oh, you didn't cook X amount of times this week, then you probably not the person I need to submit to. Like we, it needs to be very much so like 
Partnership. <laughs> partnership all the time. Partnership exactly. or nanny or <laughs> chef. If you want Stop food it. every day in the house, you should hire somebody. <laughs> Just saying. I'm crying. <laughs> but you're actually very serious. I'm so serious. <laughs> and that's again, that's the that's the kind of man I'm looking for. Who's mm-hmm. like, I'm what I can if I can't manage it and my wife can't manage it, how can we whether that's pay somebody to do it or prepare like whatever, like we can have meal prep, like whatever yeah. the case is, but that way we're on the same page. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. Do you feel like there are good examples of submission out there? Like couples? Um, I don't know. I'm not in anybody's business, so I don't really know for real. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> I could use my parents in a, as an example. I've uh, Obviously, they have gone through a lot with each other. Um, but my mom had, my mom is actually the blueprint mm. of submission for me. Because I've seen her just like be completely humble just take pride literally out of a lot of situations mm. and has grown more every single year with my dad to separate pride from decision making mm. when it comes to, to him in the household. Um, so I've literally have just been watching her a lot when it comes to like how she submits to my father. Absolutely. And that alone has kind of shaped how I view submission. Obviously I've taken some things You know, like, I'm going to do this like my mom, but I'm not going to do this like Like my mom mom, did. But um, that definitely helped me groom my definition or what I think submission is um, and how I'm going to apply it to my life, of course. And something I was thinking that we didn't even factor in that could make submission harder is finances, right? Yeah. So we're in a society where women are making a lot of money Mm -hmm. and leading in finances and how that is causing issues when it comes to submission. And what are your thoughts on that? Honestly, I think in this day and age, honestly, women, they stop submitting when the the cash flow stops. Mm. And that's problematic, of course, because like you said before, submission now is transactional. It's not because... I respect you. It's not because I believe in what you're saying. It's not because I have faith in what you're doing. It's literally because you're you're cashing me out. So I'm going to keep listening to you so I can keep getting the things that I want. Exactly. Um, But I don't, if it's, if it's based off of that, if you're submitting because of finances, submitting because of the materialistic things that you can get, obviously that's not going to last. That's not sustainable. But if you're submitting because, like we said before, it's grounded in reverence to God, it's right. grounded in wisdom, it's grounded in because you're viewing this man as somebody who is loving you as Christ loved the church yeah. and so on and so forth, that's something that's going to be sustainable. That's something that you're going to see transcend through years Time, and generations yeah. and all that stuff too. But... I don't know. I don't really know what to tell the, tell the girlies girls. out there. <laughs> it's hard. It is hard. It it's is. definitely hard. Yeah, I'm definitely going to keep praying about <laughs> my heart posture towards submission. And I think we touched on some good points. Like, yeah. it definitely is making me think of, like, how I'm even going into relationships. Like, exactly, if yeah. we date the right way, we I think we'll be able to submit when time comes in mm-hmm, marriage. Mm-hmm. Um so it's all about just being intentional. Yeah. Of course. Um, setting, letting people communicate. I think submission is all about communication. Yeah. Nobody's going to feel abused if you're letting them know like what's going on. Right. And even my relationship with my mother, I have such a great relationship with her and people are always shocked because it's like she's Nigerian, born yeah. and bred. You can tell your mom tea. I mean, talking. <laughs> my mom is my best friend. I tell my mom a lot of things and that's because she even though she is uh, the authoritative person in my life she does not abuse her power right and she comes exactly. down to my level mm-hmm. and she she doesn't even make me feel like she comes on much. she just makes it seem like she's meeting me right and we're just having conversations right. um and watching how her and i's dynamic has transcended over the years it's just like that has created a great blueprint for me when i have kids where it's not like i'm going to be like listen to me because i'm your mom it's very much so like 
you're a human being. I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. How can we relate to one another? And let's communicate. Because when my mother offends me, I let her know. Yeah. It's and important. it's important because mm-hmm. I'm like, do should I harbor resentment right. towards you? Because I used to not do that with my parents at all. No, I didn't. I don't. This is yeah. a, this. It's sorry, very new. It's this new. is new. This it's is new. this is <laughs> it's new. <laughs> this is like in the past decade, maybe yeah. five, seven years. Yeah, absolutely. Because before you're 18, your your mother is letting you know that she's not your mate. Yeah, I actually, I think I tried, and with my senior year of high school, or I got junior, slapped. Quick. I got slapped. I remember getting Very slapped. Fast. The last time I Very got fast. slapped was my senior year by my mother. Yeah. Because I she said something like, and she's like, I think you forgot. Yeah, I did forget. I did. There are certain times where I really did forget. I was like, you're right, mom. I actually did forget. For uh, I forgot. Second. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but no, for sure. I think in the right time, in yeah. the right maturity space, um, you'll be able to like get to where you need to mm-hmm. with the right people. Yeah. It's not... We're not telling people to go over here and just submit to any plain job. Absolutely. That's quite literally the opposite not. of what we said. <laughs> so ladies choose wisely. Yes. The people you're talking to, men also choose wisely too. Mm-hmm. Because there's women out there who are just like, they're not going to listen to you hell or high water. Mm-hmm. So you need to know, it's like back down to it. Can you communicate with this person? Mm-hmm. And if you feel like this is someone you can communicate, then you build a life with. Vote. And that's on both sides. So don't submit to people you can't communicate with. And don't submit to people who don't have a heart for humility and a heart for God. Because you're already setting yourself up Mm -hmm. for failure. Um, So let us know what you guys think about submission. You know, at Truth Is TV on Instagram. Join the conversation. I think we're all going to hear some really interesting answers. I'm interested to see what y'all are going to say. Maybe y'all down with this. Maybe you're like... She's a feminist. <laughs> I can't believe she's the Ooh, same. Child, don't get me started on that. <laughs> but it's honestly, I'm we we brought biblical into this, so this yeah. is less about us and our ego. Because if this was just me speaking freely, I'd be like, everyone should be by themselves in their house <laughs> to respect themselves. But in the spirit of cohabitation and us, you know, finding love and being with who God calls us, communication first. I mean, put God first and then communication second. Of so. Course. Thank you all for tapping in. Thanks, guys.